We just bought ourselves our dream four-wheel drive, a Toyota Land Cruiser 200 Series. And over the course of the next four weeks, we're going to be transforming it from a dead stock vehicle into hopefully one of Australia's toughest touring wagons. Join us for the mistakes, the glory, and a whole lot of fun. setting. Far out, that looks insane. How good's that? Welcome back, legends. Today we're doing another build, uh, another shed session. Uh, we're in the Gerties, Victoria still, um, and we're modifying our dream car. So if you've missed it, I'm gonna give you a quick recap of all the mods that we've done so far. We're turning this bog stock 200 series into one of Australia's best tours. Well, in my opinion, um, building my dream car. If you're enjoying it, make sure you like, subscribe, all that jazz. So I'll give you a quick recap. All right, so quick recap, uh, we'll rip around the car show what we've done. So we've painted the mirrors black, um, these were chrome. We've put some Maxxis razors. These are 295 70 17s on some 17 by nine ROH assault rims. This is one of my favorite things that we've done so far. Off-road animal Toro bar is on the car. Um, that is a sick bit of kit. Uh, we've also mounted the K-On bracket um, with the Oricom aerial. It's got a GVM upgrade already in it. That We've put the solar screens on a Safari R-Max snorkel upgrade. The big Bertha, a lot of girth in this one. Airbox from a place called P Patrol Doctor. Yeah, that's it there. Um, like I said earlier, a lot of dusting um, when it comes to these engines, so you've got to protect them. A few of the mods that are yet to go on. We've got to run some cables. Obviously, there's a dual bat draw systems going in the back, so we've got to run that today. Also, the new Ando for the new van. Um, we're using a big girthy Anderson plug, so rerun that cable. We've got a base rack. We've also got a heap of K-On brackets. Um, we've got an EVC throttle controller. We've got to put the solar up there. Um, lights are still to go on as well. Uh, we've got a lot going on. Exhaust. Exhaust is still coming. That's exciting. Hopefully, we can get a note with the DPF still in it. What we did have done, um, we've PPF wrapped the car. So we've taken it down to a place called Street Appeal in Victoria, and they've put a um, PPF wrap on. So this one actually heals itself in the sun. So when, um, when you get a scratch or a pinstripe down, here um, you park it out in the sun and it'll actually self-adhese so that's pretty cool um, obviously they're expensive cars so you've got to do your best to, to uh, look after them Percy the Prado had shock and paint so I promised myself on this build that I'd look after the paint first and foremost do all the protection mods not so exciting putting a PPF wrap on that doesn't change much but at least you're protected bit of peace of mind so yeah I'll, I'll throw some some vids up of the PPF going on So you're probably wondering the price of this wrap. So all up, it was $13.50 for the wrap, so the actual materials, and then $500 and something to install it. So around $18.50 all up to wrap this car, and we didn't do the bonnet or the back because we are putting a rear bar on the on the 200. So I won't tell you much about that yet, but yeah, it's it's not cheap, but yeah, hopefully it protects it um, and saves them pinstripes because yeah, and I'm yet to decide whether we're gonna tune this thing or not. Obviously it'd be a very safe tune because we're gonna be towing. You probably know that I'm dead excited about this. Uh, this is our dream car. Sarah is absolutely frothing as well. Today, first thing we're gonna do is install a EVC throttle controller. I was a massive skeptic on these things before. Um, we got it right here, actually. So, EVC have sent us a few things. So, they've sent us their new throttle controller, which is the EVC X. Um, comes in a nice little package like this. So, there we go. That's what's in the box there. EVC throttle controller. These things are renowned for taking about 10 minutes to install and they make a massive difference to these laggy turbo diesels. Um, like I said, I was a massive skeptic on them, but now um, I've had one in the Prado, toured around and sometimes when you're in the city especially and even on the beach, sometimes you just can't have any throttle lag and uh, I dial this thing right up to U9 and um, give, it a, give it a gutful and uh, gets you out of trouble. So something that's pretty cool um, is a GPS live tracker. So 
you put this thing on your car um, and it's cheap insurance so you, you can't detect it's on the car so if someone pinched your car or you give it to a mechanic um, and you don't 100% trust him or something like that you ever want to know where your car is at any given time this is your thing first we're going to throw this throttle controller on cabling for it it literally you unplug your throttle controller clip plug this in and then plug it into the other side and bob's your auntie's uncle Let's get into that now. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is disconnect the uh, the little, I guess it's called a foot bash plate because it protects you from booting all the stuff up in there. So that's your EVC wiring harness there. This side's gonna clip straight into your throttle clip and wires going to the top of the accelerator pedal. And then we're just gonna clip in that side and then the, the cable that you've just unclipped clips in the top. And then you simply run your little, I think it's like a little USB-C um, cable all the way up to the dash and that's what a, the actual controller unit, the EVC X plugs into. Unclip that, little thing on the side, there we go. And then, see that clip there? We're just gonna plug this end of the throttle controller. So that's it all plugged in there. I just gotta get it neatened up and out of the way. But uh, yeah, that took about 30 seconds. It's just in a really awkward spot to film. But yeah, you just unplug something, plug this thing in, plug the other side back in. Bob's your auntie's uncle, she's in. So that's the unit there. I've just run the cable out the side here and I'm going to mount the unit, I think, about there. Just so it's hidden out of the way. Oh, actually, I'll go down a bit so it's not on the, the beautiful wood grain dash from the 70s. So there we go. All right, so the unit's in. It probably took about... Well, I guess five minutes, maybe a bit longer, 10 minutes. I'll just show you the modes on this thing. And full disclaimer, this thing does not give you any more power in no shape or form. Um, this thing is not a chip. This is just literally taking the lag out of your throttle. Um, and it gives you different settings. Valet mode, throw it into valet mode so people can't actually thrash your car around. Um, good if you're dropping off in a mechanic, just leave it in this. Um, or someone you don't want thrashing your car. You've got valet um, ultimate nine so that is ultimate nine zero so you can dial that all the way up to nine um, there's your ultimate nine which is that's your most aggressive setting so to get out of trouble i would put it on that I'm not a hoon, so I'm not probably going to use launch adapt mode. So this actually senses how the car is being driven and it adapts to your driving um, economy. So if you want to save a bit of juice, diesel's getting pretty bloody expensive. So I could see how that one's going to get used. Anti-slip, not 100% sure on the, the um, application. And then factory. So if you did want to just drive the car as per normal, you can turn it back to that um, and then only dial this up when you need it. I'm going to install the app now. I won't show you that. Um, I'm going to learn how to use this. Good bit of kit, very cheap. And, and if it gets out of trouble once, it's probably paid itself off. That's installed. Let's move on. My biggest pet peeve about buying any secondhand full drive is that previous owner either did really good wiring in the car or half decent wiring the car or really poor wiring the car. And for this case, I think this is pretty average what's happened here. Um, this is sort of the average Joe Blow. Um, if you're watching Bobby, not a massive fan of your wiring, mate. Um, Bobby was the previous owner. So I'm gonna rip all this out and hopefully neaten it up. Yeah, I just don't feel right. I don't know what all this stuff even does. There wasn't many accessories mounted to the car when I bought it. So I'm sort of questioning what all this spaghetti even does if something did go wrong on me in the bush i wouldn't know at the moment what everything does so i'd have to fault find but i'm going to fault find here in a comfortable shed and uh, label everything get everything sorted all nicely and then hopefully neaten up this engine bay get a lot more room um, and hopefully eliminate a few issues before they even happen it's going to do a before and after um, it's pretty boring successfully relocated all them cables. It took a lot longer than I thought, so I had to bell out everything. So that's when you get your multimeter, put it on resistance, and then tap the bell button. 
and um, yeah, I was belling everything out, so making sure it was going to the places that I thought it was before I cut the cables, because the last thing you want to do is cut something that you didn't really know where it was going, and the car doesn't run properly, it throws a code or something like that. So I run the cable for the, for the DC to DC charger for the draw system too, so that's in. I ended up using four BS. Who BS? Uh, BNS is actually around 35 mil cable comparison and 4BS is obviously a little bit smaller than that. So 35 mil is around 14.4 millimeters cable diamond, the copper. Um, so obviously we've gone a downsize from that because we're not running it as far as the caravan. It's only going to carry 40 amps over about four or five meters. So yeah, the next job is to actually run in the caravan Anderson plug, which I'm going to do in 2BS again, which is like I said, 35 millimeter cable. That is to avoid bolt drop, and I've made a full video on that, so if you want to know why I'm doing such big cable, um, go watch the other video. <laughs> COVID. So, base rack, full disclaimer, not sponsored or anything by ARB, paid full price for this kit. Yeah, so I'm pretty keen to see how it fits, but they are meant to be more slimline than the Rhino. Better load ratings on the roof, longer so the slats go sort of crossways, gaps in so you can still get your hand in clean your roof. Um, our sunroof on the VX is still going to be fully functional. Comes with a wind deflector and yeah, no stupid on-road and off-road rating. This rating is the same for on-road, off-road, load it up. As long as you're within your weights, you're all good. So I'm going to unbox it, put a solar panel on top. We've also got a massive awning going on. So we've chosen to go with the Bush Company XT 270 degree awning. I've got some really cool brackets from Kaon to mount that to. Heavy awning, but very cool awnings. I've never had a proper 270 degree freestanding before, so I'm pretty keen on that and it should complement the draw system well. So they reckon this package, so the package weight is 23 kegs. So I reckon it'll be slightly more than that with the roof rails and stuff. So pretty lightweight considering. I'm very interested to weigh this bus after we do all these mods. G'day guys, I hope you're enjoying the build series. We certainly are. iTech World are having a massive sale. Don't miss out. Now is the time to upgrade your lithium or 12 volt system. Use our code SKT and you'll save even more money plus free shipping. Prices won't be this cheap for a bloody long time. So don't miss out and back to the video. So you can see straight away that you can easily get your hand in there um, and clean your roof. That's exactly what we wanted. It's a one piece, so apparently it's all welded, which I can see it is. The welds look pretty smick and it's got this powder coat on it. It's like a Mannix black um, powder coat. Really light, so very interested to see how this looks on the roof. Hopefully it doesn't overhang or anything and hopefully I've ordered the right roof rack. So yeah, we'll see what happens. So I really don't know how to do this. Just get a flatty. Oh yeah, there we go. It's a nice solid click. So I worked out how to do it, thank God. So you have to pop a little cap here and then there's two on each side. So I'm hoping once, look at the, how much Loctite they put on these bloody screws. I actually rate that, people that use a lot of Loctite. You might have it. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. How good is that? Anyone want to buy any roof rails? Get them. I've got the roof rails off. It was a bit of a mission, but I worked out how to do it. It was pretty simple in the end. Um, I actually really like the look of the car without any roof rack, roof rails on it. What I'm gonna do is just clean up these nut certs because one, once you put these brackets down and the roof rack on, you're not gonna actually be able to clean your roof that well. So I'm gonna give it a nice clean before I put it on. Plus, I'm gonna lay some silicon down over the nut certs because one, you don't want that thing moving the rack or coming off and two you don't want any water to leak into your nut certs because once it gets in there it'll drip into your roof liner and that's actually what happened to me with my first Prado so clean it up chuck a little bit of silicon down not much just a dollop or two and I'm going to chuck some Loctite on these screws seems to be pretty simple so far pretty scary actually all right, then they give you this little rubber pack. So you put that over the top. So the welded nut, that side has to go towards the vehicle. That is one thing that you don't want to stuff up. Got two little nuts, uh, bolts here, and they go straight into the top of it. While we're up here on the roof, it's probably important to talk about load ratings. Um, Ronnie Dahl's big on them. He actually called out a very big company um, for their roof rating. So this roof has a 150 kilo roof rating and some racks 
actually don't allow you to carry the full 150 kilos, which I don't think is very good. And that's also what's gone into my research when I chose this rack. So this one can take the full 150 kilos. If you had have gone like a rhino or something, yeah, you wouldn't be able to do it. It's very interesting and you definitely have to do your research if you want to be legal. And Another thing is I have to touch on is this rack looks sick. That's definitely went into um, the calculation of choosing a rack was obviously looks. And these ones are slim lined and it seems they have a lot of accessories that you can bolt straight to them. All them little roof brackets are on was actually really easy to do. And I'm actually reading the instructions today. Normally that doesn't ever happen. Breaking my heart. Oopsies. So the next step is actually dropping it on the car and test fitting it. I'm going to whack the awning brackets on first though, because things are a lot easier to do on the ground in comparison to up in the air. These are the Kayon brackets for the 270 degree awning. I have no idea how they go together. Check it out, do you reckon it's heavy duty enough? Cheers and this side doesn't scratch the roof and protect the paint because it's mint at the moment. There's not a scratch on the whole car. All right, so. Let it rip. Got to go forward a little bit. Easy. So we're just making some minor adjustments. Yeah. Yeah, let's go now. <laughs> Square. All right, so we're just tightening up the last of the nuts and bolts, uh, making sure it's really tight because we are going to be bolting like a 25 kilo awning on the side, the Bush Company. So I'm just taking my time, making sure everything's done up, and um, yeah, hopefully it looks all right. We'll pull it out of the garage and have a bit of a look and just see if it suits the car. I think it does. It's nice and slim line, so I'm pretty stoked. ARB actually do make a pretty good rack. Happy to say that. Yeah, the wind deflector's a bit dicky, um, but hopefully if it does its job, it'll be worth it. But yeah, the, the rack is quite well engineered and easy to put together, so definitely recommend them. Here we go across it, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, just are you happy with that height or do you want to come to Get that little kick. Yeah. That's 